YouTube, what's going on? Well, we're going to look at cars. We're going to get this cleared out so we can make some more space for some bigger things. We've got some 118 scout I've got to look at. But recent pickups, a lot of green light. I filled in some Auto World uh, square body holes that I was waiting for. So I finally found a good deal on those. We got that. Grand Wagoneer, Gladiator, got a Thunderbird. And of course, I was able to find, I couldn't believe it. We got uh, Blazer square bodies from M2, so we're going to take a look at those two in detail. That's kind of a new release, even though it's a hybrid of their existing stuff that they've used. I've seen some grid improvements, so we'll go over all that. But let's get uh, to the two Auto World trucks. So I found the square bodies I was looking for. I needed the uh, B series of the 84 and 83, just something that hasn't showed up locally. I'm tired of waiting. So, some of the collectors go on eBay, they don't really overcharge, it seems like. They just kind of thin the herd, maybe if they got too much of one thing. These went for pretty much retail. Um, they were a set, the B set, so that was awesome. They released four and released three, or three and four, whatever. So they put these together as a package deal, and uh, we did good. So, funky colors, we got orange and then this white and red, which is the 83. 83, 84 on the casting really looks the same. There was differences on the real vehicle, but but not enough to really change the, the way the casting looks. And there's our facts, and those are the vehicles, and then of course these are the previous. I always put the previous up. Alright, <clears throat> so yeah, nice mint on card. It's able to take them out because it's really the only ones I have. So on these Auto World mainline releases like this, you know, the wide releases, not the hobby exclusive or whatever, I'll take them out of the package. Hopefully I'll find some secondaries, but that's okay. At least I got the main litter. I'm trying to keep the packaging organized a little bit. So let's take a look at the trucks. I think these are pretty neat. I know that the white... And the red, kind of crazy, but they were painted like this. That was a color choice you could do. You could pick the roof, the belt line, or the low rocker, and then you can also do this if you wanted to. Or you can do the inside. So it's just great. With all that color combination, it's hard for Auto World to do a duplicate feeling vehicle, even if you can paint the rims. I mean, there's so many color combinations. This is a very 80s looking vehicle for sure. Uh, early 80s definitely. So red interior bucket seat of course. We've always seen that on these trucks. Never made a bench seat interior yet. I think it's time for Auto World to invest in a little bit of tooling. Updates on these vehicles. They've been very popular. We know that they always tool a different grill and everything. But still. I think making a bench seat interior would be good. I think at this point there's a race to really go further with this. I am sure in one of the major manufacturers, Greenlight, Auto World, Round 2, M2, Castline, those kind of guys and gals. Crew cab, square body, you know, single wheel and dually. Early trucks, the Fords, the Dodges, the Chevys, the General Motors, GMC, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to talk about. They think that's next. We got. To, we probably have to see it. Non-serialized base. The white walls are pretty consistent now through Auto World. Very few of them at this point really have like a squiggly white walls. It's not perfect, but it's a lot better than what we see from, especially green light. This one's a good looking truck too. Let's take a zoom. Look at Silverado badge. C10, basically the same thing. Just a really clean looking truck. I love the orange, the reddish orange with the black. I think that looks good. Kind of matching interior color. It's not as red as that. It's close, the interior anyway. Just beautiful casting. We've been through these before. We've talked about them ever since a few years ago when they actually came out. So, just a nice truck. I haven't done any shimming of the wheels here like I've done on my other ones. They'll get to that. The superb Chevy Steely Rallies. And then, of course, should have a black painted 
small block in there. No orange. 84 at the narrow grill. So yeah, good looking truck. We'll park them up up here. And we'll get rolling. But it's nice to have those filled in and looking good. Alright. Well, let's look at a, a always a favorite of mine. M-Body Chrysler, which would be Diplomat, Grand Fury, New Yorker. Was it New Yorker? Can't remember. No, Fifth Avenue. <laughs> uh, and then they had the the Canadian version, the Carvel. This is a eighty-two point Grand Fury, Detroit, Michigan, Battalion Chief car. And this is I've been waiting for Series Two to get done at the grocery store because Hobby Lobby charges ten dollars for the the Green Light Fire Series for some reason that and the the uh, the vans. So what are we going to get? Probably going to get that 81 Scottsdale. I have not seen it. That's been getting picked up pretty quickly. I'll probably pick up the 70 Econoline, of course. And then maybe the Cherokee. But for right now, I found this. And these are pretty easy to find. No one really likes these cars as much as I do, you know, collector-wise. So, so I did kind of take this car apart and shimmed it. So it's sitting correctly, at least better than it should be. Tires are good on this, actually. Obviously, we don't need to deal with white walls or anything, so pretty good. Rolls nicely. I got a little too much, uh, when I pulled the wheels off, a little bit too much uh, glue in there, so I'm going to, it's dry now, but it creates a little friction, so we'll, we'll go ahead and address that in a little bit. Let's see. Let's see, a serial number. What do we got? 4571. So I put the screws that I have in bulk. I redid those. They're nice because they kind of look like a, a, a rivet head. Simple graphics for Detroit cars. Not much going on. Probably didn't have in the 70s, 80s. The budgets weren't so big on vehicles so there you go Plymouth a little bit cheaper than the Dodge product supposedly I mean they're basically the same we have the silver bumper fillers which are on all the Chryslers back then so I like that just a good looking car the other thing I did to this was I ripped the light bar off and I shaved down the uh, supports that put the light bar on they're too tall for green light Greenlight does a good dual gumball setup, you know, I like it, it's got the old school, you know, they ran these into the 80s, you know, you might even seen them in early 90s cars, you know, carryover stuff, sometimes they recycle stuff into newer vehicles, but anyway, they do a pretty good job, you can kind of paint this out if you wanted to, sometimes they'd have colors on it, or they'd run silver, things like that, <clears throat> so this is pretty cool. This might be an additional lights over here. I just haven't uh, painted them out. So I want to. Didn't look online recently. I want to get myself up to speed on that setup. I didn't touch the grill or the the push bar, so that was assembled pretty good through green light. A little bit of flashing. We can get that off really just using our blade. You take a blade, and you can just take that flashing off without having to. Um, take the car apart so I'll run the blade through there later I did have to wipe the window out when I took it apart so this one comes a little bit greasy still one of my favorite cars really cool car probably would have had the small block in it you know they ran six slant six too but really for police duty 5.2 or 5.9 so you know in the early 80s uh, very late 70 when the M body like 79 you had the 360, but that didn't carry forward to for forever. I think in the mid-80s they dropped that as an option. I can't remember, though. <clears throat> anyway, just a cool car. All right. We love our municipal vehicles here at the garage. All right. Another perennial at this point would be um, 
our C10 truck. So this is an 84 GMC CR Classic. It's supposed to be like a three quarter ton, but of course it's the like the slitting on its ass. So we'll take a look. But Series One, just the last one I didn't get, seems to be kind of hanging out in, around here in terms of what they have. It seemed like a bit of a peg warmer, but I like this truck. They had good wheels and tires. The two tone looks good. And since this comes off pretty readily, they did paint the back, unlike when we looked at that camper truck, the Ford. They didn't bother to paint any of that detail. Long beds, I do like the long beds. It's one of the only ones that make a long bed. M2 and Autoworld still are doing short beds, so at least we got an 8 foot bed to look at. We got our 84 GMC grill into the segments there, the six segments. And we have our turn signals embedded inside the grill. So that needs to be detailed slightly, but not bad. The gold and black is kind of a cool color combination. We've talked about these trucks before. We know how to fix them. It's just when you get around to it. <laughs> So, serial number on this is relatively low, or under 1,000. It's 186, it looks like, so that's kind of cool. I have noticed, you know, in the ones that they produce a lot of, the earlier runs, you know, if you get your vehicle under 500, it seems to be the cleanest in terms of everything. Black GMC there. Don't know if it would have been black or red with this color combination. Looking like all terrains, but just kind of their silly vinyls that they use and I don't know if we can see the call out of that but it looks like there's a two there so maybe it's calling it a three quarter ton 2500 maybe you can see it all right so we looked at these before and then we got this enormous camper bed so this really only works with eight foot bed trucks but that's okay it's kind of neat here's my lowered f-150 <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah, I've been working on this a little bit. I had to kind of fiddle with it. I'd actually drilled holes through the axles. I did fairly straight. I only had to tweak this one. You can see the gap's a little bit higher there, I believe, than the driver's side. So, still slightly off, but for, for kind of winging it, <laughs> turned out pretty good. Anyway. That's some square body action. Let's back her up. <clears throat> Put her back there in the gravel. All right. Now, what are we going to look at? Well, we'll look at some Hollywood stuff. And 86 Grand Wagoneer. So Cherokee, or not Grand, but just a Wagoneer. This has their specific quad headlight arrangement on the front. So you got duels on each side. And there's old boy there. <laughs> so I'm sure that uh, if you're from a certain time frame, you know about MacGyver. I don't have to go into too much detail there. So I did flip the white walls around. If these you've seen these on camera before, there's a few people that probably looked at these, but the white walls are just atrocious. Here, let's get one of the better ones. I'll flip it around off camera so I can do it quickly. Quickly, let's see here. Yeah, so as you can see. Not the best. I wonder when they paint this, maybe the thing holding the tire in place is just squeezing it too much and it's distorting it. That seems to be the thing I could come up with. I don't see the printer going around in a circle crooked. I feel like they're just squeezing the tire in a certain place. But that's just my theory. So, newer wheels. I haven't seen these wheels on these XJs, so that's kind of cool. They didn't do the, the Wagoneer too long. It was more towards the the middle end or the late test stages of AMC ownership. Um, I, th I don't think past 87 they made this truck. Maybe they went into 89, but really it was kind of that mid 80s style. So you got the fake wood grain. And uh, I busted one of these, and they're kind of common at Walmart. Walmart sells the Hollywood pretty easily, and they sell them for under six bucks, so that's kind of cool. So if you need to load up on green light parts for your projects or anything like that, 
the Hollywood seems to be easy to get. So I picked up another one because I busted the wheels off of this because I was fixing it. It was a little crooked. So I just ended up throwing some Hot Wheels stuff on this one. This one's probably going to get some changes done. Maybe I'll take the wood grain off. I don't know. Maybe recycle the, the grill for another project Jeep. So we'll see. But right now I just wanted to throw some wheels on it so it wasn't a carcass sitting. This will probably get robbed though pretty soon. So I got two of them. Since, uh, you know, they're about $1. fifty less than average. It's fun to get them there when you're saving a little dough. But I like it. It looks good. No plate on it. Um, but there it is. Four liter Wagoneer. Pretty cool. They do that chrome base uh, translucent paint for the taillight. So it makes a good facsimile for like just doing a solid, um, you know, lensed detail. I don't mind it. And with green lights, quality, you know, they do quality printing for the most part. Uh, I don't mind. So there you go. Inline 4 on the Wagoneer. Or inline 6, excuse me. They had inline 4 on the XJ as well. They also had V6s in the, in the early part of the XJ uh, run. But really they went to the AMC 4 liter and then 4.2 then back to 4 liter. And then Chrysler took over and they put their fuel injection and computerized system in it. So, you know. Had some iterations. That was probably the best. They carried it all the way to... 2000 2001 when it was discontinued they could no longer make the inline six um, cost efficient with the emissions controls so bye bye it went even though it's a good engine all right there goes the xj bye bye and that's an unrusted one so we can live through our die cast because typically these cars are rust buckets unfortunately their unit construction drainage was adequate but not great and it's before really the the good uh dipping that uh was a little bit better a little bit more modern a little bit more computerized where the water channels are so they're just rust buckets they rust real bad floor pans inner and outer rockers the roof believe it or not rust because <laughs> a lot of the ones that have roof racks this one's not showing roof rack but wagoneers would have had it water got in there too so they're just tough very tough but they make replacement panels we're going to look at one more square by. This is a green light. This is going to be a team series. So the A team came off a series of cars through green light Hollywood. This is the 83 GMC Jimmy. This is in one of the episodes. One of the bad guys drove the this truck. I remember the color scheme. It's actually quite a few square bodies because General Motors did have a, a uh, advertising or uh, agreement with the production. I mean, they used a lot of new GM products in the filming of A team. Uh, and I didn't even notice this, but pretty funny. We'll take a look. I didn't notice until I got out of the package. It's probably why it was still hanging up. So I took it out of the package. Like, okay, yeah, you know, typical the uh, green light blazer. And then he was missing a tire. I didn't even put a tire. I didn't even put a tire on because I just wanted to show everybody on camera. Maybe I shouldn't have opened it. That could have been a quote unquote error car, but didn't even know because this was the side that was facing away. So, you know, typically I look at the green light car, just a quick glance, you know. You know, if they're bad on this side, I'm assuming it's the same or worse on the other side. So I kind of pick them that way. And if they're good on this side, hopefully they're good on the other side. So it looked like a clean build. Didn't really see any issues with it. But, yeah, no tire. And if we look at the serial, it was rather in the middle. This is 1065. It's a serial number, so that's kind of funny. Or 1085. Sometimes I can see it better here than I can with these eyes of mine. So we got the later Jimmy script. This is, well actually no, it's 83, but the Jimmy script looks pretty, the later 80s. That doesn't do Sierra Classic. That was a trim line on the truck. And of course, we got our spare tire carrier. Roof was enclosed on these at this point in the front passenger area. California tag. We got kind of a silly hitch set up here, but it's it's realistic. It just is kind of pushed out a little bit. I think it would look better if this was tucked under and the receiver was buried against that license plate a little bit better. I think it would look better. 
more realistic. So kind of these generic steelies that they've used, you know, they kind of like resemble a wagon wheel or a, a rally wheel, but they're kind of so off the mark in terms of what actually be on this truck. It's kind of weird. You know, we should really probably be using something like this, really, and then putting an off-road tire on it. So that seems to be really what we should be doing with this truck. Uh, I just don't want to buy enough of these to do that. And the casting itself is great because no one else does really the 81s in the premium style. But again, we have the soft door lines because it gets buried under the paint pretty easily. So that kind of detracts from the side of it, looks more toyish. And of course, the bad chassis design where it's sitting on, you know, basically a two wheel drive lowering blocks. They do the lifted ones, they look good. So, but again. The casting just looks too uniform. There's not enough. Um, I don't even think there's enough curvature with it either. A little bit thick here on the A pillar. You know, that could have been a little bit cleaner. If you look at the Auto World one, you can see it's a little bit more relieved. And of course, the M2 does a good job too, you know, I must admit. So we'll look at that in a minute. But yeah, just one of our. So we got a K5 uh, Sierra uh, Error car. Maybe I'll leave the tire off just to remind myself what it is unless I go ahead and customize this. But at this point, I don't know what to do. We'll just have to leave it with the others. So yeah, we'll back it up. Put it over here with CHP. Let them look after it for us. And we're going to get into, well... Before we get into the new castings, let's look at a perennial favorite of mine as well. And this is going to be a State Series 7, found out at the old Lobby of Hobby. You know, I, I, if I don't see these out on the grocery store around here, we'll, we'll go there and pick up a couple. So, really haven't changed anything on the estate wagons in terms of the card art. We just know that that's the Series 7 vehicles and, of course, the year copyright. So, really... 2021 but you probably see on the shelf 2022 which is when these were hitting so springtime basically early spring mid spring these are available online then we started seeing them in person so i saw the lime green one there's two kind of hot rod tribute vehicles it never really made a gtx wagon or etc uh, you know super b or whatever you want to call it super bird but you could kind of order the car though still, you know, pre-70s cars. You know, you could get a big block in this car. You might be able to sneak out a four-speed stick, you know, if you had the right dealer order it for you. That might be in the world of possibility. Back then, you can kind of check the boxes if you're willing to wait, not take a floor model, basically. So they put the Magnum wheels on it. They put the GTX striping. And the grill call out. I had to take this grill out because there's some flashing behind this side and it was poking out. So we got that flushed up. We got the Plymouth um, insignia there, which looks really good. There's your dual stripe. We've got our red line tires. Of course, they did not match the sidewall detail, unfortunately. We got the fine pattern back there and the thick pattern up front. So that kind of bothered me. This was glued in place, so... I thought maybe some glue kind of dripped up here into the the door jam. Well, it did, but it also busted everything off. So tailgate operates, but I busted one of the pins. So we'll just have to probably find another one if we want a pristine version. But this is pretty good. The wheels and tires are decent, a little crooked. So we'll have to pull it apart and kind of straighten the axle. Paints that kind of a, a French bluish type navy. So there we go. And I don't think, yeah, we don't have any license plate or anything like that. So 68, this is the first year for what Greenlight's been doing with the Plymouth. Um, it's too bad I don't do the Chrysler one or the Dodge one, the Coronet. That'd be kind of cool. But maybe they'll do that eventually. So they do 68 through 70 on this car. And the 70s kind of cool. Not too many 70s have done. They've been done. Very few. It's, they usually do these. And it has the, the 70s, the straight across front end where this has the, the W pattern there. The wide W. So there we go. 
little tribute car there and uh state wagon series 7 like those cars really do all right let's look at uh well we looked at the blue one last time this is in stock configuration of course i did pull off the running boards mm -hmm. This is a 19 Ram 2500 Tradesman, so more of a work truck style trim package. Got chrome grill, but steel wheels, but they're kind of chromed out. This is going to be Blue Collar Series 10, which Blue Collar's been around a while, but it's only Series 10. There's our little notebook there back in the back. Got a 92 F250, which looks like a 150 because it's sitting on its ass. And we're also going to look at the GMC Caballero in a minute, too. And get the gladiator. Gladiator's done up in Mopar body style. Or the Mopar livery. So this one I ripped all the accessories off. It came with this kind of I'd have to say cheesy blade, paw blade, so I took that off, didn't like that. And the running boards. This truck's not lifted, it's kind of stock. Now this is Cummins call out instead of the Hemi, so I like that. Um, we got the Cummins in it, which is good. I took the tires off and straightened them up. Took the flashing off so they roll a little bit better. These just kind of come off if you just peel it off. I straightened this mirror. It was facing up like that, so we got that kind of straighter. I put a little black in here to kind of give that chrome some pop because it wasn't completely painted in. So we got that to look a little bit better. Took the bumper off, straightened it. <laughs> I had to do a little work to this. Uh, I did not pull the wheels off the axles. I just kind of straightened them up in terms of the tires. There's a little bit of roll bounce to it. So that still needs to be worked out a little bit. It has the receiver hitch with no hitch. That's the way it came. And they show the, the simulated bed liner by using this as a plastic insert. So the, really the, the metal is all on the outside. And then there's our Cummins. <laughs> so yeah, we got the greasy windows in there. That that film, that that tooling grease. It's almost like sewing machine oil. I have to kind of describe it as. So there's our wheels. They look great. I, I wouldn't even say they're small because that's kind of how they look on the real truck. They kind of look small like that. Uh, I found still that the green light tire is still going to be the best profile. So what I do is I'll put them on one of these in a drill. The the the, the rim size for all green light and 164 scale tires fit on this. If it slips a little bit because this is smooth, you reverse it. Take the blade out and put it on this because this is a little bit bigger. And this knurled edge will hold the tire and you just spin it at a high speed and... We can go ahead and kind of mill the, the tire a little bit. So you can see there, I take a sanding stick and just kind of hold it against the tire till it gets some trueness to it. You can still see the run out on this tire is still awful. So that's really very difficult to get out. So I'm using more of a softer sanding stick. But it does get most of the ridge. I didn't do this one as much. You can see that mold release ridge there. And uh, it just... The tire, the wheels kind of have bad run out too, but it's more the tire than anything else. So it's a shame. Um, but if you get real riders that fit on there and, and, and other wheels and tires from other manufacturers, sometimes you can, you can make a pretty nice product because the body is really good. Now on this, it's the 8 foot bed, but they also make a short bed on a 3 quarter ton truck. But I think this is, is this supposed to be a, uh, no it's 25, so it's not a 1 ton. I don't think the one tons you can get eight foot, but I could be wrong. So there we go. And I, unfortunately, I don't think you can get stick shift in this truck anymore either. I think Chrysler was the last one to do stick shifts on their pickups. And that kind of went away too. So kind of a cool truck though. I like the way it looks. Very plain. They're going to make these. They're going to start flooding the market with these in terms of putting in all their series so get ready <laughs> if you're a fan of the truck um but yeah i like to see the heavy trucks with the single wheel setup as well as the dually it's nice to have both but it'd be good to do a single cab if they could finally do it you know if we see single cab again reach back in time and do some 70s and 80s trucks we're going to see the the d series uh half ton dodge we're going to see that soon so that'll be pretty good too I believe that's coming from green light so that'll be fun all right, let's get into some 
Let's get into some El Camino stuff. And first, we'll look at the uh, Hobby Shop Series 12. This is an 80 El Camino Super Sport. It came with spare tires. Spare tires are basically the S10 uh, rallies that are silver, so I put those aside, but we've seen those before. $8 car. Really, you can get them a little bit cheaper than that online. But I don't have to get everything. I really don't. You know, I've skipped whole things before, too, if I don't have any vehicles in there I want. But the El Camino seems to be something I like. Um, so I seem to be getting them. So we'll take a look. This one has no bed cover or anything, but it's a cool-looking truck. It really is. So we got the Super Sport on the lower belt line. Look at that. So, very, very good attention to detail. I love the G-Body rallies. They use those on Malibu, too, and Buick and Old, so you can see how detailed that is. The center cap is good. Tires are good. So, they're using the this tire design, but since there's no tampo printing on it, it's nice and clean. The only thing I did was push the wheels onto the axles so they were flush to the body and the chassis. But other than that, they were fairly straight. So this car rolls very well. Very, very well. It also comes with Greenlight's um, lower air dam piece that they've figured out for this series of cars. It has the single headlight front end. They also had a quad headlight front end, which we'll take a look at here in a minute. The only other car that really comes to mind that I almost was get back in the day was MPC and AMT and all those kit makers they would do promotional models for general motors ford chrysler etc well they had all the el caminos on the g body um molded um after the colonnades so we're talking i believe 78 79 when these cars came out into the 80s well you make a really nice high quality 125th scale car and they were pretty cheap but they went up in price, they used to be about 20 bucks. You can get them on eBay now, they're probably more like 40 to 50. Maybe you can still find some cheap, but I never bought one and I was always upset because I did like this having it in perf perfect scale. Well, this really is almost identical in terms of fidelity to the kit. So we see how good the grill is with all the painted done for you. And the body is really good. We always have clear windows. I never had to drill these out. The only thing really that I had to do with them is kind of fix the axles. But I just love all the colors they're using. So yeah, they just got a little chipped up. I'm going to have to paint that over again. But And then this one, for some reason, this front wheel, we see that they forgot to tampo this area there. On the center cap. But other than that, the car's awesome. Bucket seat with floor shift. And it's got the Malibu dash that we all love. <laughs> and the really cool back window glass that's curved and then the painted bed. So just an awesome car. I believe they were on the G Body Wagon platform. Of course, they shared that rear bumper as well with the taillights hidden underneath. So just lovely car. All right, let's look at the other two. So. I got two of these because I think this is a cool one and I want it to have an extra. So sometimes I'll get carded green light. So here it is. 78 GMC Caballero. If I'm saying that, I'm pretty sure I'm saying that right. Caballero or Caballero. Caballero. Laredo. So high trim level. Also, it's the first time I've saw these, uh, these early 80s GM... Um, hubcaps so they will take a look at those on the model I have out and again series 10 so it's also where the 2500 tradesman we just looked at came from so this is a cool car this is going to go in my boxed area here she is so this one had some pretty wild white walls on it that were just terrible so I took those off had a little trouble getting these wheels squared up so I'm still working on that we still have the single headlight grill let's take a look here so this one has a little bit more of a, a blacked out grill than the other one does and this is a uh is it, the other one was an 80 and what is this one 
78, yeah, so basically the first year, pretty sure, yeah, 77 was the old war body. Just a cool looking car. I love the two-tone with the cream, so we got the gold mist and the cream and then the tan interior. <laughs> so just a great car. Definitely be a car you'd see probably like on chips, you know, in the background, kind of hanging out back there. We got this wild cat what we looked at on uh, a couple episodes back. We saw the black one from El Camino movie that also had this casting of the bed cap. Pretty cool. And all clear plastic. That's how they do it. And then they paint it. They mask and paint it. And basically, you don't have to worry about having separate windows to push into another piece. So kind of cheapens it. Makes production a little bit faster and easier. <laughs> Again, no license plate, but you got the Laredo call out there for the trim line. Let's take a look. Such a good job. You got the GMC. So I was also happy to get, quote unquote, you know, the GMC version. It's really just a rebadge of the same vehicle. But, you know, again, they didn't make as many of the GMC. They didn't have as many GMC outlets as Chevy. So, rare vehicle. Some flashing got there, so it's a little bit bent to that piece on the bumper so I'm gonna have to kind of figure that out probably have to pull the bumper off and kind of bend it back there's our Caballero call out there by the gas door of course I reversed him back I probably got to play with a little bit of the uh, black wash on these hubcaps but you can see how accurate they look compared to the real life versions so I love that clear windows on this one this one I have not pulled apart or anything a little bit of a fingerprint in there, though, as you can see. Just a cool car. I like. The, I love the two-tone on it. Not a fan of the cap, but that's, I don't know. It's just cool anyway, but probably not run it with the cap if it was me. And uh, there we go. So, And then the third one we're going to look at is an 84 El Camino. And it's a quad headlight car, so it'll be cool to compare them. So let's put these old girls over here back up a little bit get this in focus all right so this is going to be hitch and tow series 24 this is the one just with the trailer they also have a series where you get a car and a trailer with the main vehicle so it just depends on and this is a conquista and utility trailer i'm kind of like the utility trailers are kind of cool so with the 72 cadillac we've looked at that of ready so i've pretty much got most of these this was a pretty good release the only one i don't really care for is the, is the uh well actually i got all of them didn't i oh yeah oh the canoe trailer huh gladiator texas trail no i got that too we're gonna look at that as well got the arrow vault actually yeah it was a pretty good release probably should have got them online typically if you get the case or the set it's pretty cheap compared to buying them separately all right so here it is and this also has that color scheme like the 78 does, the 78 GMC. This is a Chevy. It's got the rallies that we all like. And then we got the quad headlights. Now, problem I have with this is this is very accurate, pretty much. Although, they keep the body the same. They kind of piece this nose on there. And I know I had a nose piece on there like that, but I can't remember if this fender here went all the way over here. There was no seam. I just cannot remember. I'll have to do some research on that and just get back to you. But just kind of noticed that pretty clearly. I just didn't remember the brake being like that on these. This is the facelifted one. So, yeah, we got these rallies. Now they're painted cream like the contrast color. I filled in the, um, the holes here and the wheels some black just to kind of clean it up a little bit the trailer's kind of messy with its wheels so there's our El Camino badge it's kind of later in the El Camino life before they started getting rid of it thinking about getting out of it El Camino business you know they're dropping the Monte Carlo soon and the uh the Regal and the, the Oldsmobile Cutlass Monte Carlo, all those cars. So the utility trailer is kind of cool. It makes you snap on the trailer uh, ramp. 
and I put, installed the landing gear there. So I did have to clean this up a little bit. I didn't like the way this was fitting. It was too low. So what I did was I popped it off and we went ahead and shaved it down a little bit. So this piece that fits into the chassis um, went ahead and shaved that down so it fit up. And I wanted to get the the receiver touching the back base of the bumper as much as possible. And that that makes it a little bit more realistic looking, I think. And there's our Conquista uh, call out there for our trim line. So I guess that was uh, a fairly well-optioned one. So you get the nice paint job too. Just a cool car. Good light-duty pickup truck, you know, if you don't need to carry a bunch of people. Uh, what a nice looking car to, to haul things in. Just a nice vehicle. Good ride too. So there is with the little trailer. The little trailer with the wagon wheels. Going down to Menards. <laughs> Alright. Back her up here. It's good to have these little El Caminos like this. You know, different kinds. We're looking at some different flavors. Probably like this one the most, but these two are cool too. But I like the gold one. The early ones are kind of cool to see. All right, and we're going to look at Texas Trail Edition Gladiator with a canoe setup. So we'll look at that. Again, same hitch and tow series 24. I like this Gladiator because it's. Uh, it's blue. It's a good looking blue. I touched it up a little bit. I kind of, it was very faint here where the grill was, where the black wash was. So I filled that back in, made it a little clearer. I didn't kind of fill the lights in, but I should have a little bit more with white. And let's see. So I took the tires off and cleaned up the flashing on the tires so it would sit flush on the rims. So I think I got worked out that mostly uh, it did come with the bed covers I like these bed covers are kinda cool um, painted in bed and have to screw with that uh, windshield or the <laughs> side windows obviously had a mishap at the factory look at that so yeah we're gonna have to drill this base out and kinda fix it up unfortunately we have the Texas Trail call out on the hood let's take a look there there we go you can see the uh, the cloudiness too. So black hard top, not body color. It would have been better if I think it was body color with the blue that it says. This blue is applied, but it had a lot of ghosting. So if we look at the tailgate, for instance, we'll notice that you know, there's a lot of paint lifting on the edges. Well, some runs in it. Um, so a little ghosty looking, a little thin, but. I think if I clean up the windows and, and all that and, and kind of give the top a once over, I think if I fix some areas that are kind of dull, I think it'll come back. Give it a lift, give it some serious tires, I think we'll be in good shape. So we'll get to that. We'll get to that. Um, as an update, too, we took uh, the Honcho Special Edition truck and I didn't lift it, but I cleaned it up. So cleaned up the grill, filled in the black wash there. Um, black wash the rims, fix the tires, put them on my old handmade uh, lathe. Kind of got these to balance out so the, the thing doesn't go up and down. Did pretty good. Looks pretty good. What do you think? So I might not screw with it too much. I might not want to lift it until I find some white rims to do that with. I think um, with some of the Hot Wheels vehicles coming out soon, I think there's going to be some white wheels I can rob off some of those so but yeah here's our gladiator now let's look at our trailer you notice i took the hitch off it was uh just really bad badly positioned so we'll have to get that hammered out soon but this has some cool things a little kayak looks like a one-person kayak tiny and then we have the big canoe this is kind of cool it's got a lot of uh detail to it it's got the wood rib showing through on the bottom and then that. And this is kind of a neat trailer. It's a little utility trailer. It's got a cover on it that comes right off. 
so we got a little open base in there to put your gear in and it's got the rack rack systems plastic but it's pretty sturdy very thin as we can see it looks good I think even it looks good with you know my cleaned up El Camino hitch it doesn't sit in there or there's some paint on the inside of this that needs to be drilled out typically to clean those hitches up if there's too much paint I'll just run this in there real quick give it a little once over ream it a little bit and uh, she'll still sit on that good but yeah I think that setup looks pretty good and if you want to see how it all goes together let's take a look so we got the the big canoe and then we'll put the little kayak there and then we should be able to run this through here and uh, there we go we're ready to go to the lake or the river whatever you want to do it's kind of neat <laughs> All right, now let's get into some casting that's just been released. We're going to look at the 66 Thunderbird and we're going to look at the 86 Ford Taurus. So, Robocop, when I was getting out those, uh, <laughs> this is the first one, so this is when they put those. This is supposed to be the future, but they're still using Ford Taurus just because it had that um, bubble shape. It kind of looked like it was more accurate. Or, or more accurate to like a what would they say like a futuristic car kind of like it wasn't like Judge Dredd where they had like actual concept cars driving around okay so yeah and this is going to be the more recent release for Hollywood it's going to be series 34 wow this is where uh, good old MacGyver came from they did a great job on this car this one's awesome I'm probably going to get a couple more of these because they look neat They'll probably be cool parked next to each other. So New Detroit. Right? C O C P or C C P whatever the hell it was. I think it was O C P. I can't remember. So they painted the headlights. I think they're not always painted on all of them. They got the newer updated uh light bar. That's pretty cool. Spotlight. So those are kind of showing off their tooling that they can use now. So really the only issue with this car is that the wheels are a little inboard. I love the wheel covers. They look great. Although I don't think this car had wheel covers like that. And they used the, 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 the dreaded these vinyl, hollow vinyls with no detail to them whatsoever. So other than that, looking good. I mean the body of the car is good. It rolls fine. Even with the early Taurus where it had that kind of flattened out rear wheel uh arch still rolls in there good there's our tail lights barcode scanner or barcode license plate <laughs> bench seat interior with the column shift this cars had fours and sixes front wheel drive um the police package they did police package on these the most one of the most notable ones that you can still find pictures online of is the uh, Utah Highway Patrol, you would use these cars with the old Utah Beehive on the side there. So those are always cool cars to look at. If you want to see an old school Taurus police, of course they're, they used Taurus police until they discontinued it. Police Interceptor Sedan is based off the late generation for Taurus pretty cool looking they're gonna have a civilian one of these so i can't wait to really look at that completely f sealed so nothing opens on it but it's just a cool car very very cool uh even though it's kind of boring but we all like the boring ones and now we're gonna look at this car which is another thing part of series 34 66 thunderbird with the drop top Thelma and Louise, it's the one where they go off the cliff together and kill themselves. Sorry if I ruined the ending of the movie. <laughs> oh, jeez, I bet the movie's 30 years old by now, isn't it? So anyway, here it is. Look at this. I didn't change anything. Look at those white walls. Look at that. So, 
just terrible but the body is amazing and they also do opening hood on this one so this will be cool to see in other releases really amazing engine bay it's not really painted that much but look at all the casting detail from the brake booster to the shock tower to the radiator core support battery tray and battery um the huge 66 ford thunderbird engine air cleaner just so much stuff under there just looks so good here wait let me back this up i'm ruining out of space the wheel covers again are have been cast for this car i have not picked out the detail but i will so you can see the the five star that comes out from the center that's going to be detailed out and that'll look a lot better once it is small headlights thunderbird grill they also took and matched, paint matched the interior piece with the exterior. So that was like that on that um, piece there. So they went ahead and filled that in. White interior, 66 Ford Thunderbird, that beautiful center console that goes through. So it's like a 2 plus 2 car. Uh, column shift vehicle. Usually a big block Ford motor in these mid-60s ones. Um, so pretty cool. Over 400 cube. I think they had 390s too. 427 maybe in the late cars maybe after 66 67 68 69 i know that they were using those type of motors but 66 it might have been still the 390 um just can't remember but yeah terrible tires you can definitely take the fronts off but you'd have to drill the base to get these rears off so i just want to show everyone the way it looked before i started screwing with it as you can see look there's a white wall there so there's two white walls on this one on this rear tire amazing absolutely amazing never saw that before kind of an interesting car maybe we shouldn't do anything to it to prove that it had a double white wall so yeah cool car now let's get to some really cool stuff let's move on over to the grassy area and well let's go to four wheel drive park i found a very very going to be almost impossible to find retail wise but I found them and you can see them there in the corner let's bring them over so I found the M2 Blazer set that was so hyped up especially on Instagram now these are scrambled meaning that I've <laughs> swapped bases and, and tops and stuff so don't get bonkers I'll, I'll explain the differences in a minute but uh, yeah I was able to find them very excited for them. We'll go into detail in a little bit, but let's take a take them in, soak them in. They're looking awesome. So very similar to the pickup trucks. I'm gonna bring a pickup truck down so we can actually can explain to you the differences real quick. Uh, let's see. And of course we got this one that was in the background, so we'll look at these two in a minute. But uh so this is the box. And the box art. So I was actually um, there's four left, and they left the sleeve, which I was really excited for. I think maybe Walmart stores would probably get one or two of these sleeves, and that was the end of it. So we'll look at the sleeve first because I thought it was great. It's one of the few sleeves I've picked up from M2, so it'll hold my boxes. So we got the GMC on one side, and then the Chevy on the other, and it was just really cool. They got the old school um, brochure style backgrounds and things of course the gym the jimmy one has a lot better look to it and take a screenshot on all that of course you can see that you could buy just with one seat these trucks which was kind of funny back then and of course when you took the top off you know they weren't concerned so much about as safety as they were but the whole roof forward went out of there so we'll take a look now they did the roll bar on all these. I took the roll bar out um, on some of them just because I didn't like the way it, it went through. It looked like a custom truck. I wanted some of these to look more stock. So this one is the 73 K5 in orange with the red, uh, orangish red with the wood grain. So we'll look at that one. These are all basically one of 9600. So yeah, we'll just put this back here. I'm just going to throw it back in the sleeve one by one. And then they had accessories, so we'll look at that in a second, too. I took that off. I, I just could not leave well enough alone. I really wanted to play at these for a while, so kind of went to town on that. Here is the GMC version, which I really like. 
This is the 73 GMC Jimmy Sierra 4x4. So this is white with the wood grain. So we'll put that in the box there. And then we got the lowered 73 GMC Jimmy Sierra. So it's the custom lowered with the wide rims. You know, in each case, I went to two during the same day because I knew they hit at the stores. And then if the local ones put one out, usually the other one does. And I did. So I was able to find duplicates, but I didn't buy duplicates. I felt like, you know what, I have the trucks. I don't need duplicates. That's probably a wrong decision. But you know what, let's let someone enjoy it when... The first Square by Skin Syndicate trucks came out. I got a full set, pretty much. Maybe I was missing one. I was never able to get the second set of Square Body Syndicate trucks. And I f felt disappointed in that. So I felt bad taking the rest. But there was other two more lower trucks that came out. And those are the ones that weren't available every time I went to the other store. I would see the, the four-wheel drive ones and this red one. But that chromish green and the flames one, that would be taken. You'd think they'd want the stock versions, but no, no. I think these are the better of the set. So this this one, the yellow one, was kind of with these wheels, so I didn't really change that. I did put in a silver center cap. I painted that in to kind of give it some dimension. Um, but no grill guard, and it had the... Um, roll bar in there so I kind of put a little touch of glue on this because they're very loose but they really just come off like that and I didn't touch this interior this has the tin and windshield too which is kind of crazy looking but so there's the roll bar they put in each of these trucks um, I did see roll bar in some period pictures they didn't have the four point it was just a two point roll roll bar um, this was probably something people have done too but so I left this two point one in the white truck which I glued down to but you can see it in there so this one actually had the orange one soft top so the way this one comes is just the white truck with the soft top the orange one had all the accessories so it had the hard top which let's just demonstrate with this and then it had this rack and it had the brush guard so let me just do the brush guard real quick for you looks something like that and I, I took the brush guard off because it's a great accessory M2 cast it very good if you want to see one installed real quick here it is in white you probably be able to see it better on camera so I have it where it's attached to the, the chassis on this truck so like when I switch bases I can just switch this with other trucks so I took this mint green truck that's one of my favorites and uh, took the stock ride height truck wheels off and I did the lift in one. So this is the pickup truck and it is longer wheelbase which is correct from the K5. So we can see the difference there. So really the same type of construction. Okay, We're not really seeing anything different there. Everything's the same. It's just a shorter wheelbase. So you can't interchange them, unfortunately, but that's okay. See how far back the front. So they basically, in the real truck, we know that, you know, from the engine down to basically the first part of the door, that's going to be the same. So the transfer case point, all this geometry here is going to be the same. But look how short the rear uh, drive shaft is compared to that one. So we see a big difference there. I love that M2 went to the... I think it you know, must have been difficult to really cast the leaf springs in heavy die cast with the loop um, to receive the axle. I mean, I think that's a really great design. They knew that probably assembling this with plastic is going to lead to pretty a lot of issues in terms of alignment and having the car sit really goofy. So saying, I want to just be done with it, so I'm going to cast it as one piece so there's no room for error, I think that's a really smart idea, so... I think we'll be able to give him a kudos and feather and a hat for that. And let's take a look. Engine's pretty much the same as the little trucks are. Same thing. Same type of deal. Now, in terms of the grill, on the Chevy grill, pretty much the same. Not, not too much different. This one has more silver in it. But, you know, the depth and where the headlights are the same. But the GMC has seen an improvement. 
So they're actually um, molding the GMC into the grill instead of just kind of writing it onto a Chevy grill. So they really redid the GMC setup. So now the grill looks amazing. It was a little light in um, the black wash. I went ahead and, and filled that in with the black, but I didn't touch anything else. And then I filled in the all the chrome wheel with a little bit of silver in the middle there to kind of call out that that part is the uh, steel painted wheel and then we have our chrome beauty trim wings on the part there so i i just love this truck looks awesome i i wanted the hard top on this one not the soft top so i switched it uh, i did go ahead and fill in the rear spare tire so this does have the spare tire carrier so that also is an optional thing that m2 does basically the yellow one's a good demonstration of just like a stock truck with a lift and some wagon wheels this one again another lifted truck I'd like to have a more of a stock ride height version um, to do maybe I can do it off of the lowered ones which we'll take a look at this kind of unique truck um, just to do like some of these wheels so I took this truck and used Auto World's best steel wheels ever and did it on their slammed version of the square body syndicate series one so this one turned out to be a really cool truck too. But anyway, we'll put this back. It's getting a little crowded. So yeah, we took a look at some trucks. We got the orange with the soft top now. Soft top's kind of cool too. So they do the separate window glass with the, the setup here. And you can see this tinted one, same way. So... But they have really good relief. So they knew that making this separate, not having to pin it down to this truck made for a really clean design in terms of where the windshield frame was and all this area here didn't have to have any posts posts or anything any mounting tabs so you know it's really up to you whether you want to glue it down i did it on these two because i like these trucks these turned out to be some pocket trucks for me because i like the way they look so they kind of got tightened up but other than that i mean they're awesome. So we'll put the soft top back on the orange truck. And we got the the white truck, which is really sweet. And let's take a look at this one real quick before we end the show. Well, a lower GMC, amazing. And it's got these newer cast, um, kind of like big Detroit steel wheel type truck. Like a bigger version of the stock rim. So if you look at the profile of this wheel, I'm trying to get it to adjust. We have the old school um, GM dog dish wheel center cap with a large doubt steely. And then we have this newer style tire. I don't think I've ever seen this front tire. It'd be good to have a set of this all on all four, I think. Just because it, I like the drag setup with the mini tub, but I think those those wheels look better. So... This has this style hubcap, or this one has like the, the truck hubcap kind of deal going on here. So it's kind of an interesting matchup. It's got, of course, we got our tinted windshield. I don't know. It kind of makes the car like when this is together. It, it looks like it's one of those vehicles that doesn't have an interior, but it does. And you can see the interior is amazing. It really is a very good interior. Um, all separate. So the steering column, the steering wheel the dashboard, the seats, and then the rear seat and everything all separate. So really you can take this apart and paint, in detail paint it and make it look really, really sharp. So just in case you're willing to do that. This one, they did put an LS engine in it, so that's kind of cool. You know, that's just an engine plate that you can take out. So if you wanted this LS set up in your 4x4, you can swap it. <laughs> Definitely. So this one I didn't paint, but or fix it yet but you can see they have GMC stamped in there instead of it being something that they painted on top of the GM bow tie so it makes it look a lot more realistic this one has all the um, body trim on it it just doesn't have any two-tone going on and we got a pretty good looking rear deck there too so they put some relief in this that's the other difference they did with all these trucks versus the pickups where this was all just flat and smooth. So we have some relief here and here 
if we want to remind ourselves, you can see how smooth it was on the pickups. And the other big thing that they listen to us, I think, is we notice that on the trucks there's no door detail in terms of where the door line is. You know, and they're all like that, no matter if it has thin paint or thick. Well, they solved that issue. I think you probably might have noticed that if you were paying attention, where we have nice thick door lines and panel gaps where now we have the detail we want in the body so it almost looks like the doors will open that's how good it is so i'm very happy for that it makes it, it makes a world of difference so we have now tailgate detail with actual you know panel relief and we got door lines and rocker panel lines and all that stuff so we're doing much better much much better and they have a great fitment in terms of how these hard tops fit so if you want to glue these i just take a little, tiny bit dot dot with a toothpick and then you put in this channel here you can see there's an l channel here just a quick dot dot maybe another little small dot of super glue thin and then just plop it down hold it there and that sucker will be on there but you do it very lightly, so if you want to crack it off at any point, you can, and you're not going to bust anything. So if I wanted to pull this off, I could. But it keeps it on there for me from losing it. So I am very, very happy about the Blazers. I hope everybody got a good look at them on the grass mat. Let's go line them up real quick. These are some great trucks. I love the yellow one, probably my favorite, and then probably the white one, the next favorite, and then the, then the orange one. <laughs> There's my pickup. So there we go. Hope everybody's uh, doing well and enjoying the diecast hobby. Thanks for stopping in and watching. We just looked at a lot of vehicles today. Hope you enjoyed it. More to come. I'm going to clean this mess up, and then we're going to get right in some big scales, get those cleared up, and then we'll go from there. More to come. Till next time.